give, keep the world, give me Jesus. What a wonderful thought. What a great song. And I hope you'll apply that in your life to just make Jesus the main thing. Keeping the main thing the main thing. That is so difficult sometimes because there's so many things being hurled at us all over the place. Now, our verse this week, let me turn there real quickly. Our verse this week that we're studying, and I hope you'll memorize it, is found in the book of Proverbs, and it's chapter number 14 and verse number 34. And it says this, Righteousness exalteth a nation. That exalt means that it lifts it up. But sin is a reproach to any people. Sin is a reproach to any people. And I thought about that thing. I thought about that little word reproach. And so as we enter into the lesson today, as we begin to think about uh, what God would have us to be as Christians and how we can best serve him and count for him every day and uh, honor him and pray for his intervention in our lives, in our church, in our country. And my, how we need that intervention of God now today, right now. Let's pray. Ask God to send revival. Ask God to bring conviction. Ask God to, to bring uh, in the minds of some confusion and disarray so, so that they can't figure anything out. And we just need God to work. God can work in unbelievable ways that we can't even imagine in the hearts and lives of people. And most of all, let's pray that God will use us to help bring many others to Christ. If we could just be faithful in winning people to Jesus Christ, it may be a slow process to begin with, but if each one would win one and train them, and then there'd be two, and then those two would win two more, then there would be four, and on and on we could go, and this thing could just multiply, and over, the, uh, over a, a few years, we could have millions more of new Christians serving the Lord Jesus Christ, praying, walking with God, and uh, being what God wants us to be in reaching the new generations as they come along, one by one, helping people to miss hell and make heaven, how good that would be. But listen to this verse again. Righteousness exalts a nation. Righteousness, when God sees his people doing the right things, being righteous, honoring him, loving him, serving him, keeping his word. And we had a good study on righteousness in the last couple of days, but here we are at mid-morning manna in the midweek from North Harrison Baptist Church, and we're right in the middle of the week on this Wednesday. And it, the Bible says righteousness exalteth the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. God is not a respecter of persons. And the Bible says that sin is a reproach to any people. And as I thought about that word reproach, I decided to just go to the concordance and look it up, see what I could find out. I found out that the word reproach or reproached or that, the other things of it, or reproaching, reproach, reproach it or whatever, are 111 times in the Bible. So I thought, well, I better find out exactly what this is talking about. And I went to the dictionary. I didn't want to. I thought I knew what it meant, but I just wanted to make sure I got it right. And the word reproach means to express disapproval or disappointment. To express disapproval or disappointment. How sad that is that so many times uh, that God has to be disappointed with us. And he said that sin is a reproach. It's, it's something that God doesn't approve of. Now, I want you to see something. I, I decided to uh, run down. I looked at several of these verses. And man, what a Bible study. There's 111 of them, so I don't have time to go to all of them today. But I want to go to just, just a couple. And let me just give you this one. And uh, this one's found in the book of Numbers. It's near the first one that's ever been given. But it says this. The so uh, let, let me back up to verse 29. It says this, Ye shall have one law for him that sinneth through ignorance, both for him that is born among the children of Israel and for the stranger that sojourneth among them. So God said, I don't want you to be a respecter of persons, whether it's for uh, an Israelite or whether it's some stranger that dwells among them. If they, if they sin, that is, if they miss the mark, if they fall short, if they disobey uh, my will for their, for their life or for their actions, he said, if they do... For, the same, for both of them, there's the same penalty. That's it. He says, God's, again, God's not a respecter of persons. He's not going to punish one person more than another. God is not biased. 
God has no racial discrimination. God loves the whole world. I, I like, again, I like red, brown, yellow, black, and white. I like to put blue in there too. Red, uh, red, brown, yellow, uh, uh, red, yellow, brown, yellow, black, blue, and white. God, uh, they're all precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world, and he loves the adults too, and he wants to make a difference. But he said, you have one law for him that sinneth through ignorance, both for him that is born among the children of Israel and for the stranger that so journeth among them. Listen to this. He says, verse 30, but the soul that doth aught presumptuously, whether he be born in the land or a stranger, the same reproacheth the Lord, and that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Because he hath despised the word of the Lord and hath broken his commandment, that soul shall utterly be cut off. His iniquity shall be upon him. Boy, God is pretty strong in that thing. God said, it's one thing that if a person ignorantly does something wrong, they'll both receive the same punishment. It doesn't matter if it's an Israelite or a stranger, a Gentile, a Jew, whoever it is. And it doesn't matter they'll all be treated the same. And he said that's also true if someone sins presumptuously. He knows it's wrong, but says nobody's going to tell me what to do. I'm going to live the way I want to live. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to make my own system of belief. I have my own belief system. I'm going to do it my way, and uh, God can take the highway. He says that is a reproach. It reproached the Lord. It says... I don't approve of what God wants me to do. I'm disapproving God. I'm disappointed in God. Imagine God trying to tell me what to do and how to run my life. Well, he's just trying to ruin my life. And ladies and gentlemen, obviously that is not true. And those who love the Lord and follow the Lord and obey his commands are those who receive the blessing from the Lord, not only here temporarily. And, and, and by the way, don't get me wrong, Christians go through the same uh, face all the same difficulties that unsaved people face. It rains on the just and the unjust. When a hurricane comes through, like some that are heading toward the coasts of America right now, when a hurricane comes through, it's it's not it doesn't jump over Christian houses and just hit the houses of those who are atheists or or something like that. It, that's not the way it works. It we all face the same thing. The difference is how we can react to those things, and we can either curse God disappoint him or say he's disappointed us or we can decide we're going to love him we're going to serve him we're going to find out what is god's will in this thing and we're going to make the best of it we're going to keep looking up we're going to rejoice in the lord we're going to say god's in control he makes no mistakes and he works all things together for good to those that love him and those who are the called according to his purpose and we just keep on serving him and keep going forward so again uh the lord said some things calls us to be a reproach to God, but some people act like God is a reproach to them. Now, I want to give you one other thought here today and uh, from, from, from a psalm, and it's psalm number 69, and it's a, it's a rather lengthy psalm, so I can't read the whole thing. It, it, it has uh, 36 verses in it, but I want to read just a couple places. He said, beginning in verse 7, I'm going to read, because for thy sake I have borne reproach. Shame hath covered my face. I am become a stranger unto my brethren and an alien unto my mother's children. For the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up and the reproaches of them that reproached thee are fallen upon me. This person that's, that's, that's speaking here is saying, look, I sold out. I get, God, I gave everything to you and now everybody's turning their back on me because they're mad at you. They don't like you. They don't like what you're asking them to do. They don't like your laws. They don't like your rules. And now suddenly I find myself because I said I'm going to stand for you no matter what. I find myself being reproached. I, I, I've become a reproach to them. And when I wept and chastened my soul with fasting, that was to my reproach. And he goes on and says a number of other things. Let me get down here uh, to verse number uh, verse number 19, thou hast known my reproach and my shame and my dishonor. My adversaries are all before thee. Reproach hath broken my heart. I am full of heaviness and I looked for some to take pity, but there was none. 
and for comforters, but I found none. They gave me also, now, that, now you might get a hint here, of who it is that's doing this talking. They gave me also gall for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Now I won't go any further, but that's the Lord Jesus Christ. I think you might have picked up on that. Jesus Christ said they hated me for because I stood for you, dear God. I represented you to this lost and dying world, and many of them hated me. They hated me so much that and even in remember the Lord performed all these miracles. He he loved people, he healed people, he saved people, he did so many things, and yet the world hated him and it couldn't stand him and wanted to kill him and in fact did crucify him. And ladies and gentlemen, he bore that reproach for you. As a matter of fact, he said it was so heavy. It was so heavy that it broke my heart. My heart was broken, he said. Wow, that is strong words from the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember there in the Garden of Gethsemane where he prayed and sweat, as it were, great drops of blood, knowing that cross was there, that he had to bear that. Our sin, the sin of the weight, the weight of the sin of the world, he had to bear on that cross. And he, and he, he said, God, if this cup could pass, Father, if this cup could pass from me. But then he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Now, folks, we all go through tough times. Are you going to get mad at God? Are you going to start blaming God? Maybe God has a purpose that's far greater than you ever imagined. Imagine what would happen to us if Jesus had just decided he wasn't going to do God's will. We would not have a Savior. But thank the Lord, he died in our place. He became our Savior. He offers us the free gift of eternal life. And he was despised and rejected. And he, he was mocked and ridiculed and spat upon and his beard pulled out and whipped with a cat of nine tails and nailed to that cross. And he did it all for you. And he shed his blood and, and they buried him. And three days later, he arose. He was God in the flesh. He, he came out of that grave. He overcame sin, death, hell, and the grave. And he did it for you and did it for me. And if you're willing to believe that and receive him as your savior, you can be saved. If you are already saved, then you ought to be telling that story. You ought to be busy at it. You ought to be going around. Hey, have some gospel tracks with you all the time. Be ready to, to, to share the gospel with somebody. If you can't go through the plan of salvation in your New Testament with them, then give them a gospel track. Read it to them and, and uh, go to the nursing homes. Go to the hospitals. Go wherever you can go in this COVID-19 season. And, uh, and you still come in contact with the, with the mechanic at the garage and with the postman delivering his mail and with the doctor when you go there and with the grocery store as you, at the check out line and at the drive through at McDonald's and other places and Walmart and Target and all the other places you go. Don't tell me you can't do it. Just you're, what you're really telling God is you won't do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's don't make him a reproach and let's don't be reproachable to him. Let's let God use us for his glory. Let's pray together here and uh, we'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Thursday and Friday still to go. And uh, what a day that's going to be. Don't forget tonight at uh, 7 p.m., Brother Shane Rogers on live stream, Facebook, and it'll be a blessing, I'm sure. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to just come to you in prayer. Lord, thank you for your son bearing our reproach. Lord, help us not to be having these pity parties and feeling sorry for ourselves when we have to go through a little bit of difficulty. The Lord, help us to be rejoicing in you and looking for your purpose and your plan in it and serving you and loving you. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Someday I'll get to see friends go.